just want to call to order. Um, this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print materials are available upon advance request. If you would like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833 at extension 202. The notice of non-discrimination rights and protections to beneficiaries with regard to the federal title six slash non-discrimination protections in the state non-discrimination protections is protected in this, is posted in this meeting room and is available on the O'Colony Planning website. And again, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833 at extension 202 for more information. And thank you all. And I want to call to order. And Bill, do you want to do the, um, the roll call? Is he muted? <laughs> I don't know. We, we still can't hear you, Bill. <laughs> John, could you do it? Sure. Um, town of Abington. John Here, Stone. Uh, Bruce Hughes alternate. Uh, town of Avon. Town, uh, town of Bridgewater. Hi there, uh, Shane O'Brien, town planner for the town of Bridgewater. Thank you. Uh, City of Brockton. Brady Winston, mayor's office. Jay DeGrace, mayor's office. Uh, town of East Bridgewater. Town of Easton. Frank Swan, Easton Department of Public Works. Uh, let's see, town of Halifax. Town of Hanover. Town of Hanson. Uh, town of Kingston. Town of Pembroke. Uh, town of Plimpton. Town of Plymouth. James Downey, town of Plymouth. Welcome. Uh, let's see, town of Stoughton. Bruce Cardino, chair of the planning board. And John Charbonneau, town planner. Welcome. Uh, town of West Bridgewater. Town of Whitman. Dance up with your vice chair board selectman, alternate. Very Nelson. Uh, let's see, uh, Brockton Area Transit. Lynn Geiler, Grants Manager, Brockton Area Transit. Welcome. I see uh, Bill Fitzgerald from Avon has uh, joined us to represent Abington. I'm sorry, to represent Avon. Welcome, Bill. Um, Mastot, District 5. Hi, Hi uh, everybody. I'm Barbara Lachance. Uh, welcome. Looks like we have a few people. Um, uh, is there anybody from Mastot uh, Office of Transportation Planning? Yes, sorry, that's me. Um, hi, I'm Ray Yusakwame, um, a regional planning coordinator at the Office of Transportation Planning. Very good, welcome. And uh, I believe that is everybody. If there's anybody that I've missed or anybody who would like to uh, uh, make, make themselves known, uh, you, please unmute yourself at this time and identify go. yourself. Okay, okay I, I believe we're all set, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, item number two, uh, public comments. Do I have any comments at this time? Hearing none, I'm gonna move on to item three, which are the minutes of April 7, 2022. Um, anyone have a motion or corrections at this time? I'll make a motion, Dan from Whitman. A second that motion. Second. A second, Glenn Geiler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, all in, I'm moving from approved. Uh, number four, communication, Sean? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's a few items uh, for the communications packet this month. Uh, the first is Bay State Bike Month, which is <coughs> the month of May. It's returning um, after missing a couple of years. Um, Bay State Bike Month, um, they have an events calendar on their 
website. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Mass Bike at the following email address. And if you have, if you would like any additional information, um, please click on either of the the links in this staff report. And connected with Bay State Bike Month is Brockton Bike to Work Day. It will be held on Friday, May twentieth, from seven to eight thirty a.m. at the Brockton Area Transit Authority Intermodal Center. Um, over at 10 Commercial Street here in the city of Brockton. Um, refreshments will be, will be provided as well as mass bike handouts. If you would like any additional information for this event, please click on the link in this staff report. Uh, the next item is the Beyond Mobility, the Massachusetts 2050 Transportation Plan. Uh, it is a planning process that will result in a blueprint for guiding transportation decision-making and investments in Massachusetts. To get involved and learn more about this plan, uh, you can click on the following link to watch a short video on YouTube. Um, and there's also a website on the state's uh, web website as well. And if you would like any information on Beyond Mobility, you can reach out to Derek Cravat. He is the project manager at um, the following email address. The next item is a virtual design public hearing in the town of Easton for quarter impro improvements on Washington Street, Route 138, including intersection improvements at Washington and Elm Streets. Um, it will be held May 12th, which is a week from today at 7 p.m. Um, attendees will have the opportunity to ask questions and offer comments. Um, please visit the following the link in the staff report for more information and to register for the event. And that is communications. Thank you, Sean. Sean. Can, you, can you hear me right now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thanks. All right. Any questions for Sean? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to move forward to item five, which is reports. Brockton Area Transit Authority. Uh, would that be Glenn today? Madam Chair. Hi, Bill. Um, just a few updates this morning. Um, oh, this afternoon. Uh, ridership remains uh, really steady for us. Uh, we're actually. Um, hoping for a slight increase, like all transit authorities. Um, we're working on a uh, new service for the town of Rockland <coughs> that works more like an Uber Lyft. Uh, it's gonna be a micro transit service. We hope to have some more information about that for you guys in the next month or two. Um, <coughs> excuse me, there'll be surveys going out to Rockland residents and also uh, local businesses um, to find out more about what they'd be looking for for that service. Um, we are in the middle of our SIP planning time of year. Uh, we're excited once again to say that we're in the process of planning for electric bus replacements from here until 2027. Uh, that project is kind of ongoing and we're on the we're in the process of bringing on a consultant to help us with this transition plan um, with the ultimate goal of applying for some LONO grant funding. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody had any. Thank you, Glenn. Um, not hearing any questions, I'm going to move on to B, which is the Greater Attleboro Taunton Regional Transit Authority, GATRA, and that would be Sean. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have no update for this meeting. All righty. Uh, item C, which is the South Coast Rail Project, Sean. Yes, thank, thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, as everybody is aware, the South Coast Rail Project is going to restore commuter rail service um, to the South Coast. Uh, Taunton, Fall River, New Bedford are the major cities within 50 miles of Boston that do not have commuter rail service. Phase one will provide a one seat ride by extending the existing Middleborough Lakeville line to Taunton and then southward to Fall River and New Bedford, splitting off at each, you know, into two branches to get those cities. Um, in the last month, uh, some of the work that was conducted involved continuing fencing installation along the Fall River and Middleborough secondary lines. Um, utilizing Cotley Street and Berkeley to access the right of way for various project activities, uh, railroad and track work in uh, Asanet, Berkeley, Fall River, and Taunton, and 24-hour culvert work in Asanet, Berkeley, Lakeville, and Fall River. Additional work included uh, daytime, daytime construction at station sites and layover sites, 
as well as overnight and daytime transportation of soils to the Freetown station site, as well as Weaver Co Weaver's Cove layover facility in Fall River. Um, if anybody is interested in signing up for the weekly updates on the South Coast Rail project, please click on the following link to enter your contact information to receive the email updates. Thank you, Sean. Any questions for Sean on South Coast Trail? Thanks for the update, Sean. Going to move on to item six, which is old business, the FFY 2022 to 2026 Transportation Improvement Program implementation. And I think that would be Charlie. Uh, Madam Chair, um, we have a, a shining star, Bill McNulty, who were transitioning tip uh, development. So this is a uh, bill show today and uh, going forward, he'll be given the, the updates on this okay. line item. And I believe he, he's done this in the past and uh, he will certainly exceed all of our expectations and do a great job. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Uh, Hi, Bill. Hey, Noreen, sorry about that technical issue there, but um, so yeah, Sean, if you just want to move uh, to the next page, there you go. Uh, so a couple of pro couple updates. Um, so the Brockton project um, improvements at um, at Center Street and um, in Carey Street, Lyman Street. There was a design public hearing uh, held a couple of weeks ago on April twenty sixth uh, in Stoughton. The uh, Carter um, improvements were rule one thirty eight. The seventy five percent. Package has been received by MassDOT, so that, that is very good news. Uh, as we get closer to um, closer to eventual advertising of that project. Next page. Um, the um, oh, um, so yeah, Stoughton. Um, as I just said, the Route 138 uh, project, uh, 75 percent package uh, was received. Easton uh, corridor improvements on Route 138. There is a design public hearing scheduled um, May 12th, which again is next week, um, and I, I will be attending that. Next page. And finally, in Avon, um, the um, the intersection improvements at Route 28 at Spring Street and um, and Harrison Boulevard. You can um, it's currently not programmed, but it's to be uh, it's going to be included in the um, Federal Fiscal Year 2026 of the uh, of the tip. And Brockton uh, improvements on Forest Avenue. Um, there's a pre 25% scoping meeting that was held uh, last month. Duxbury, the bridge replacement um, of the uh, of the Paddock Point Bridge. Um, currently not programmed, but that's to uh, be. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. The wrong project. Um, the Brady Bridge replacement uh, over Route Three, uh, not currently not programmed, but to be uh, included in Federal Fiscal Year 2023, and then the um, the bridge replacement for the uh, Powder Point Bridge um, to uh, not currently not not programmed, but to uh, to be included. Uh, next page. Next page. Next page. And that is the update. Uh, does anyone have any questions on any of those? Yes, Bill, uh, Joe Scardino. Um, can you tell me if the 138 corridor work in Stoughton includes a traffic light at the end of York and Washington? It does. Uh, so, it, it, uh, in, so that project includes the reconstruction of that intersection, which will include uh, the traffic signal. I think they might also be doing some uh, work to uh, um, level out the uh, slope of York Street a little bit. Um, it, it re replaces existing traffic signals uh, at the Stop and Shop Plaza. And then 
corridor, just uh, general corridor improvements uh, in, in between those points. Any sidewalks included in that? Yes. Um, I, think, uh, uh, I think it's sidewalks on both sides. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions for Bill? Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Tony. Um, moving on to new um, new business, and that would be uh, the appointment of nominating committee for all colony JTC officers for 2022 and 2023. Um, yeah, so I, I I can cover this one. Uh, so okay. as you as you know, um, you know the. The term, the term for um, chair and vice chair runs from July 1st through June 30th. Um, and there's, a, there's always a nominating committee. It's usually three people that volunteer uh, this time of year to, um, to nominate uh, who they'd like to serve in that those positions. Uh, so if there are volunteers, typically what we've done uh, in the past, so um, like the next meeting, whoever would like to volunteer to be in that nominating committee, you we just, you know, we'll start the meeting like, well, like 15 minutes early, those three people will discuss and uh, choose who they'd like to nominate. And then uh, this committee would vote on those nominations. Okay. I'll, I'll volunteer to serve um, Bill, Joe Scardino. Thanks, Joe. A couple others. I think, I think I did it last year, Bill Fitzgerald. I can do it again if you want. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Bill John Charbonneau here. I think I did it last year, and I'd be willing to do it again. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. So, uh, so. I'll, um, Sorry, I'd be happy to volunteer again too. Okay. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, yeah, it can, it can obviously be. It can be more than three. Uh, so I'll um, I'll I'll reach out to you and uh, set up a time that. Uh, we can virtually set that up. Like I said, it's usually before this meeting, um, like 15 minutes early and um, go from there. Bill, if I may. Yep. Um, I'm willing to uh, continue as vice chair. Um, if uh, anybody else wants it, it's up to them. But uh, as I say, I've been vice chair for a while. Noreen's been chair for a while. So I'm willing to continue as a, a vice chair to this uh, committee because it's important that whoever is chair and vice chair that they both attend every meeting so we can uh, conduct it. That's very and, important. And just to add um, to Dan's, uh, I'm also willing to continue as chair, um, just to let the committee know. Huh. And thank you all for volunteering. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you, Bill, so much. You're I'm welcome. gonna. Move on to item seven uh, B, and that's the draft of the 2022-2026 TIP program amendment one. And we're gonna talk about the 21 day public review period. Yeah, great. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this TIP amendment number one was re released to a public review and comment period by the MPO on April 19th. And the MPO is reconvening on, I believe, the 17th of May to hear public comments and consider endorsement. Um, that's typically the process, and we'll quickly run through what the projects are. Um, there was additional funds realized through the signing of the Appropriations Act by Congress in late winter 2022. So with the bipartisan infrastructure law, it resulted in about 3.2 additional 3.2 million additional dollars for the old colony tip in 2022. So we worked with the communities massed out to, to find potential projects. And one of the, the screening criteria was finding projects that were ready to go. And on the road and bridge side that we didn't have any projects that would be ready for advertisement in 2022 that were not already programmed. So, you know, one of the ideas was to uh, use the federal highway funds flex them to FTA and back could then use those flexed highway funds for 
projects that they were interested in, whether it was capital improvements or operating assistance. So on the next slide, we have the beginning of the seven projects that we had originally identified. So the, there are capital items there, including um, replacement buses, and then we had a line item for operating systems, and then we had a line item for uh, intermodal center pavement management related items. And next slide, we have the three more projects, you know, further capital items, support equipment, and then finally a support vehicle. And then on the next slide, finally, uh, shop equipment, lifts, and related support items. Um, since this uh, TIP amendment was released to a public review and comment period, well, we've obtained additional information and guidance from Federal Transit Administration, noting that um, since BAT had already technically applied for these grants or these projects, that they wouldn't be able to use uh, funds that were flexed over to Federal Transit if this amendment was ultimately approved. And so that led to um, putting these projects on hold and then, you know, BAT and OCPC and MassDOT working together to find an alternative project to use the $3.2 million where the preceding seven projects couldn't move forward using the flex funds. So we're currently working offline with, with BAT and, and MassDOT to identify a project. And one of the concepts was to bring a project into 2022 from 2023 in the in the draft tip that included the purchase of electric fixed route buses and it would be about 3.3 million dollars for those three buses and we're working on uh, some timing issues because where this tip amendment would substantially change in project makeup it's would necessitate a, an additional public comment period um, initiated by the mpo at their meeting from May to June, and there's a question whether or not the, the administrative timeline could be made to uh, approve that TIP amendment and then run through the state process and then subsequently run through the federal process on the back end, and whether or not all that could be accomplished within this current federal fiscal year. So we're, we're working behind the scenes, and that's an update of where this is at. Um, originally, it was intended that this would be an action item for the, for the JTC to review and potentially approve this. But since additional guidance had come in on the feasibility of these seven projects, uh, we're working on the, developing that alternative project during which we would come back and revisit this project list with the, the JTC at your next meeting. So that's kind of a, a long-winded update to saying that these seven projects aren't going forward um, using flex funds. Um, the good news is BAT has already applied for the project. So the projects are just going forward in another way using their, their existing funds. So I don't know if the folks have any questions that are on the call or are they Charlie, Charlie has uh, Henry? Yep. Yeah, Charlie, is there any way, I know you can't short circuit the 21 day period to help you with your chronology, mm -hmm. but, it, but could the MPO have another meeting uh, in order to approve within the fiscal year? to accelerate that approval process? Yeah, we have um, that the, the MPO is scheduled to meet in uh, May 17th. May, and then they're also scheduled to meet in June. So they're already meeting. In times past, there have been opportunities where the MPO has waived the public comment period uh, length. You know, they've shortened it. Um, the question is whether or not um, one or two weeks would, would make a difference in the overall timeline. That's what we're trying to get a read now from the, the federal partners in, in MassDOT themselves and what type of frame, <clears throat> framework and uh, accelerated timeline would would still make it, so. Yeah, given the, the, the uh, uh, backlog of materials and, and uh, shortages and whatnot in the supply chain, I guess this, the, the sooner to get into that, put your orders in, mm -hmm. um, and that would cut down on delay on the other end. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Good luck yeah. on that. Yeah, and, and Glenn, perhaps you could uh, weigh in too on the timeline for once you put in an order for the buses, it's typically 18 months, if I'm not mistaken. 
Oh, sure. So, um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, thanks for, thanks for reiterating that Joe, we, we feel that every day. Um, but just to reiterate what Charlie said, these projects are already ongoing. Um, they'll be completed in this fiscal year, regardless, we were, we're hopeful, uh, that we could still move ahead <laughs> with, um, the bus purchase for next year. Uh, you know, the, 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 the backlog varies. Uh, we try to get in the queue for buses as soon as uh, we're able. Um, I think that they're looking at 14 months right now. So um, I don't have a, an update um, beyond that, um, but we're happy just to report that all of the projects are ongoing, like Charlie said, regardless if we're able to flex the funds um, here. And thanks everybody for your patience. We know that this is not standard operating procedure. Uh, we're trying to uh, just utilize this additional funding in the region. And thanks, Charlie, for the opportunity. Um, to, to, I'd be happy to answer any questions otherwise. <clears throat> Thank you, Glenn. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to 7C, Charlie, to uh, 2023 to 2027, TIP. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So <clears throat> one of the other action items that the old colony MPO did at their April meeting was to release the draft 2023 to 2027 uh, TIP to a public review and comment period. And a quick summary of what these projects are. There are 11 road projects and one bridge project at the time that this draft was released. And there were about $26 million in BAT capital items. And actually, interestingly enough, since the release of the draft tip, um, MassDOT identified two additional bridges that had been coded into an incorrect region uh, in the bridge program. So, those were the two bridges that Bill McNulty had, had previously uh, reported on. That's the Duxbury Route 3 northbound southbound bridge replacement over Franklin Street at about $26 million. And the second bridge in Duxbury being added is Pounder Point Bridge Ave bridge replacement over Duxbury Bay at a sum of about $150 odd million. Um, now, these bridge projects, additional bridge projects, do not compete with um, the road projects for the regional target funds. They have a separate uh, bridge funding category uh, line item at the state level. So this doesn't compromise any existing projects that were already in the tip. So a quick rundown on the projects, uh, begin on the next page, I believe. So in 2023, there were the two original Stoughton projects and that's um, Central Canton and Tosca Drive, currently at 100% design. Project number two is a quarter improvements on 138 as, as Bill talked to earlier. This is advanced construction phase one of phase two. And this is where we can see that additional Duxbury Bridge project being added in 23. In 2024, there are several projects. Uh, the first being uh, phase two of the quarter improvements on 138, that's advanced construction. It's The reason it's being advanced constructed is because um, construction cycle spans more than one year and also the total project cost was grandfathered in and was more expensive than our available regional target during the time of original programming. Project number two is Route 123 at Plymouth Street, signalization and geometric improvements. Third project is Brockton Center, Carrying Lyman Street, uh, where the design public hearing was recently held. Uh, the next project is Systematic Countermeasures and Safety Systems Implementation in the City of Brockton. And this is a safety project that Mass, DOT, OCPC, and the City of Brockton will be working on together to develop uh, safety uh, planning and countermeasures for several locations across the city. And last but not least, rounding out 2024 is Plimpton Bridge Replacement, Winnetuxet Road over Winnetuxet River. In 2025, there's the, in Brockton, Lyman Grove, Summer Street, and replacement of Grove Street Bridge Project, currently at 25% design. Uh, the next project was the quarter improvements on Route 138 and including the Elm Street intersection. In 
2026. There's the intersection improvements at Hancock and Chestnut Street. In Avon, there's the Route 28 Spring and Harrison Boulevard project. In Duxbury, there is the signalization of the ramps at Route 3 on the both the northbound and southbound side. And then uh, another advanced construction project, phase one, is the Route 14 Hanson project. Um, this is phase one of two. In 2027, uh, the Brockton intersection improvements at Crescent, Quincy, and Massasoit Boulevard is being added. And we have phase two of Hanson, that's the Route 14 project. And last but not least is the Potter Point Bridge bridge replacement in Duxbury that's being added, total price of about $157 million. So that's a quick rundown of, of the road and bridge projects. On the next slide is, uh, I believe you previously shared a list of draft capital items for mass.cip that they've been developing. If you can just run through this, um, and defer to, to Glenn if Glenn would be uh, like to have an opportunity to chime in on, on these projects as well um, as we pan through there and perhaps some questions at the end. Next slide. So Absolutely. all these- let me, know, let me know when you'd like me to. Sure. Well, you know, it, we just preface this by saying this is a, you know, part of that strategic investments to maintain a, a state of good repair and to help address uh, performance management targets. Um, but Glenn, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Charlie. I don't know what to add to that um, other than to say, once again, we're, we're excited to be presenting um, a fully electric fleet replacement plan here. Uh, all of our buses, our replacement buses proposed are um, all electric uh, and there's associated charging equipment for those uh, vehicles. Um, that's a very exciting endeavor for us. Um, again, just more state of good repair work um, and just replacement vehicles. But <laughs> the majority of our program uh, here is uh, fleet replacement. Um, it's also for the upkeep and management of our, of our pavement, uh, our facilities, uh, both our maintenance facility, including the replacement of some of our um, Oh, keep scrolling, Charlie. Thank you. Um, the replacement of our parking system. Uh, we do have a parking lot that's accessible for people who are taking the MBTA commuter rail. Keep going. Uh, just improvements to our intermodal and our maintenance facility. And if anybody had any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh Glenn, uh, Joe Scardino, um, what's what's the capacity difference between a 35 foot and a 40 foot bus? In terms of passengers, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I think I don't that's. Know. I'm sorry, I have to uh, I have to look the, uh, find out about that. Uh, if if Bill or Charlie knows the answer to that, that would be helpful. Um, and if not, I can get back to you. Sure. I do not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't I don't either. So that's a great question, Joe. <laughs> Okay. That's a good question. I don't mean to stump the stars today. No, you are. Um, no, and so, and some of that has to, you know, that that's a great question. Any additional questions for Glenn or Charlie? I would just, um, while this uh, the, this transit list is capital items, I would. Perhaps Glenn could speak to operating assistance too, that the importance and need for that. Uh, right, we assume that that has that laid out as well, right? Yeah, so it looks like this is just a list of our capital improvement plan projects. And Charlie said it's it's focused on capital. We have a number of, um, a number of operating requests that will be incorporated into our uh, proposed tip plan. I'm sorry, sorry, Charlie. It doesn't look like they got um, added here. Um, and those are just for our uh, regular um, operating needs. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Glenn. So this um, 
ultimately is an, is an action item before the JTC. And if there was a, the pleasure of the committee to uh, approve this favorably, we could report that to the MPO at the, their next meeting. Do I have a motion on the floor? So I'll move, Madam motion. Chair. Okay, yeah. and I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm moving on to item D, which is the Bay State Bike Month, May 2022, and the Brockton Bike to Work Day. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, so Sean touched upon this a little bit in the communications, but um, I'll re reiterate some aspects of it. Um, so yeah, the event's going to be taking place on May 20th. It's a Friday from... 7 a.m. to 8.30 at the Brockton Area Transit Intermodal Center. And I will add that uh, the refreshments are gonna be provided by Lady C&J Cafe, and they're located right inside the Bat Center. So that was, so it's convenient. Um, and there are some other ways you, you can participate in Bike Month. Um, one is you can track your rides if you, Go on a bike ride, you can track it with the Mass Bike Love to Ride group. And each week you log three plus trips. You can be entered to win a weekly prize. And at the end of the month of May, everyone who's logged trips, you can be entered to win a grand prize of um, a $500 gift card from Priority Bicycles. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. We uh, hope to see everybody out there on their bike on a uh, May 20th. Thanks, Kyle. Any uh, questions about the program in the day for Kyle? Okay, hearing none. I'm gonna move on to item E, which is congestion mitigation and air quality program. And they report on April of 2022 with the uh, CMAQ consultation committee meeting. Yep. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, just give you an update on uh, recent activity here uh, in the Old Colony region with the uh, CMAC program. So for those, uh, I think pretty much most people on this uh, call are familiar with, but um, so back, uh, way going way back in the day to the IST legislation, um, there was a program develops called the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Program. Um, and that, that program was a special funding category uh, for projects that are designed to uh, improve, well, as the a, as a, uh, title of the program would suggest, to improve air quality. So in Massachusetts, um, to fund programs under that, to fund projects under that program, uh, we have to, the MPOs or the state, depending on who the project proponent is, has to um, demonstrate that the project has um, substantial uh, benefits to reducing uh, four, four um, categories of emissions. So the, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, volatile org organic compounds, and uh, nitrogen oxides. So, um, it, so there's a, a committee that meets periodically throughout the year, uh, usually two to three times throughout the year, where they, uh, we, uh, the MPOs in the state, we present our projects, and then uh, this committee uh, ultimately votes if the project is eligible for funding under that program, and each MPO uh, has, has a vote on each project as well as the uh, Massachusetts De Department of Tran Transportation and the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. So I just wanna forward a uh, slide, Sean. So you can see uh, down the bottom of your screen. So the committee most recently met last week um, and I, I attended that committee. I presented three projects that I, you know, my analysis showed that I believed had substantial improvements to reducing those greenhouse gases. Um, one was the Abington project, um, which is the 
uh, basically the reconstruction of Route 139 at Chestnut Street and Old Randolph Street. The uh, the project in Avon uh, intersection improvements at Route 28 at Spring Street and Harrison Boulevard, and the project in Stoughton, the uh, intersection improvements at uh, Canton Street, at School Street and Summer Street. I did um, the analysis for all those. I presented it and those received unanimous approval as being eligible uh, under the CMAC program. So that's definitely good news uh, going forward. Anyone have any questions on any, any of that? That's great, Bill. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job on that. Uh, any comments or questions for Bill? All righty. Thank you so much. I'm going to move on to item eight, which is other business, community local technical assistance studies. Bill? Uh, yep. yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, very brief update this go around. Uh, so, um, I'm working on a project with Plymouth that's our most recent request uh, to do an aerial inventory of uh, multiple locations using the drone program. Um, Kyle on the staff is uh, working closely with Plymouth to uh, finalize both the, lo the locations we'll be looking at and the time frames, the time frames we'll, we will be doing those flyovers uh, using our drone. Uh, otherwise, um, the status update of the other projects is included in this report. Any question? Thank you, Bill. And Joe, I think your question is being answered by Glenn, if you want to. Uh... I saw it. Thank you, Glenn, okay. for your efforts. You're welcome. I didn't want to interrupt, um, but I'll just share. Uh, so our, our 35 foot buses have 32 seats. Our 40 foot buses have 38 seats and obviously more room for standees if they need. Um, and both uh, 35 foot and 40 foot buses accommodate two wheelchair positions. So obviously you use the uh, the uh, 40 foot bus on where the ridership is such that demands that size bus. Um, we we cycle all of our buses throughout all of the routes um, as oh. part of our Title VI plan, um, but obviously uh, they're able to accommodate more passengers if needed. But interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much, Glenn, for looking that up. <laughs> I called in an expert. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Thank you. That's what a professional does well. Um, item 8B, which are the staff reviews on ENFs, EARs, and NPCs. That would be Kyle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if you could go to the next page. Uh, so one new project we have is um, for Carver, Plymouth, and Wareham. It's the ADM to Hornet mixed use development. And this EIR was on in MEPA previously, but this is the final EIR. Um, and I just provided this table of all the different aspects of the project. And I'll, I won't go through everything, but I'll just run through um, some of the ones under construction. Um, so we have 27 Charge Pond Road, that's construction that hasn't commenced yet. Um, 140 to Honnet Road, 150 to Honnet Road. Um, then at the top there, I just missed a couple. Um, the Wing Kinko Cranberry Bog expansion that's under construction mm -hmm. and Cranberry Bogs and infrastructure that's also under construction. You can go to the next page. And then one project under reviews for the town of Plymouth, the Long Beach Mixed Sediment Nourishment. And this project is intended to enhance the coastal resiliency of a barrier beach, which helps protect um, the mainland of downtown Brockton from coastal storms. Um, this project uh, represents an improvement to the coastal environment of Long Beach, and this does not pose a threat to public health. Um, lastly, we have a public notice 
for the town of Easton. Uh, it's an application and issuance of a draft groundwater discharge permit. And this is um, in the amount of 31,000 gallons of treated sanitary wastewater per day. And that uh, concludes my report. Thank you, Kyle. You're okay. welcome. Anyone have any questions for Kyle or comments? Thank you. I'm going to move on to hearing that. Thanks for your presentation, Kyle. Um, item 8C, which is regional concerns and local transportation issues. And I will open that up. If anyone has any questions or comments? Yeah, if I may. Yes. Madam Chair. Uh, yes. At our last MBTA advisory board meeting, um, one of the major concerns from somebody that one of the uh, retired conductor um, from the South Shore had was the double tracking that's needed because of the extra trains they plan on putting on uh, the rail going from you know Boston to Plymouth. Um, there's areas where there is just single tracks and it accommodates the amount of trains that are on the tracks now, but if they, they're thinking about adding trains to that run, it's gonna be a congestion issue and possibly a safety issue. And he asked if the MBTA could look at the areas where the track runs and if they could add, uh, you know, at least a few, a few more miles of double tracking where when one train has to pass the other uh, going to opposite ways that it would accommodate it. So they're looking into that. That's it. One of the main major issues. That's great, Tim. That's a great observation and comment. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you think that they'll they'll come back? Well, we'll see at our next MBTA advisory board meeting if, in fact, uh, he'll ask that same question. We'll see if, in fact, they are considering that. I mean, it's costly, and you've got to right. have the area to put the extra double track. Sure. You know, but it, I mean, if you're going to add another 20, uh, possible 10, 15 trains running mm -hmm. daily. Uh, they're going to be passing each other where you don't right. have double tracks the entire route. Right. So it's a safety yeah. issue. It is. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, comments for your town or regional wise or staff have any comments? Madam Chair. Questions? I'd like to actually follow up on uh, Dan's comment about the uh, double tracking. And, yes. and defer back to Sean's presentation on the communications section of this uh, staff report. Uh, MassDOT's embarking on the launch of their uh, long range transportation plan and there's a place to fill out survey of gaps and needs. So yeah. I would encourage any and all participants interested in uh, infrastructure improvements or needs to, to take a, a look at that site and fill out the survey and document um, concerns or comments that they would have with the transportation network. Mm -hmm. Good point, Charlie, thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Um, just <laughs> item number two, I, 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 there's a couple new faces on the call. I'd like to take a moment to mm -hmm. introduce Raisha from MassDOT uh, Office of Transportation Planning, uh, who will be our MPO liaison going forward. I don't know if I wanna take a moment to Say hi. hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Raisa. Um, yes, I will be uh, the MPO liaison. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Great. Welcome. Uh, we have a, a new person from the, uh, the Brockton Enterprise, Namu, who is a uh, transportation and public safety reporter. Uh, thanks for joining our call and talking, uh, seeing what we're talking about on transportation. And we have a great network here and we certainly uh, uh, have already conversed with you uh, via email and we've seen a, a nice article that you did about the uh, virtual design public hearing for Cary Center and Lyman Street. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome. And uh, last but not least, I see a familiar face, Shane, uh, new uh, uh, planner in Bridgewater, formerly of uh, Brockton fame. So. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for the shout out, Charlie. Great to have uh, you on board. Great to be back in the OCPC region. Thank you. You. You, have, you become closer and closer each time. Glad to see you. Glad to be back. 
And then I see another face, uh, Jay. Jay, Jay, if you want to take a moment to say hi. Hi, I am uh, the Constituent Services Liaison for uh, the Brockton Mayor's Office. I started about three months ago. This is my first um, Old Colony uh, Joint Transportation Committee meeting. So uh, looking forward to more in the future and learning, learning more about the, our area. Great. Nice to meet you, Jay. Thanks for joining us. So as, as you can see, we have a great okay. network of colleagues and there's certainly a lot of planning and projects going on. So thanks for joining. Thank you, Charlie. Anything, anything else to add? Did we freeze up? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Any other comments so, or questions from the group? And welcome all our new members. Uh, we're expanding, and that's right. great. All right. If there's no more regional concerns, I think that at this time, in this is a lunch meeting, so I'm going to uh, put the motion on the floor to adjourn. Do I hear? Do I hear a second to that motion? Second. I'll second it, Whitman. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. See you next week on the first Thursday at 12 o'clock. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.